Hello guys and welcome to the channel TMZ The Historian. My name is Zamir Karim and in this video I'll be talking about the poignant history surrounding how breast tax was imposed on the marginalized communities of the erstwhile princely state of Travancore in the 19th century. I'll also be talking about how underprivileged communities, those who were ostracized from mainstream society, those who were deemed as untouchables in India as well as in Sri Lanka, which was formerly called Ceylon, how were the women prevented from covering their upper body, how they were prevented from wearing an article of clothing to cover their bosom, and if they did, they were subjected to gruesome tortures. And if you're interested in such stories, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel, TMZ The Historian. If you got queries, please send them to tuankarim at gmail.com. So without further ado, let's get to the history of breast tax in India, as well as how marginalized communities in India and Sri Lanka had to endure great hardships for them to cover their upper body. Talking about the history of covering the upper body for women to cover their breasts, if you look into the history of either India, if not Sri Lanka, or even if you read the histories of various countries in Southeast Asia as well as in other regions of Asia, you will realize that prior to the arrival of the Europeans and prior to the advent of Abrahamic religions, prior to Islam being introduced into the Indian subcontinent, prior to the introduction of Christianity as well as Judaism, it was absolutely normal. This is prior to the arrival of the Europeans in the 16th century. If you look into the histories surrounding various countries, as we know, India, Sri Lanka and most of the Asiatic nations are steeped in history and heritage. We were civilized nations. But prior to the coming of the Europeans, if you look through all the sculptures, the books that date back to several centuries, if you look at all the carvings, if you go to the temples, if you go to shrines that are devoted to numerous deities, the goddesses, if you go to all these Ajanta caves and numerous other caves across India, and even if you go to various museums in Europe as well as those museums across the world and look at all the statues, the sculptures, as well as the paintings, illustrations, the frescoes that date back to several centuries that came from our part of the world, from South Asia, you will realize that most of the women, irrespective of their social class, they all went bare-breasted. Prior to the coming of the Europeans, if you look at all the paintings, if you look at all the works, including books, you will realize that going bare-breasted, going nude above the waist was considered normal. It was not considered obscene not vulgar, promiscuous, licentious, it was not considered as risque back then. It was considered normal for women to go bare-breasted. Even if you go to some of the world heritage sites, archaeological sites in India and Sri Lanka as well as in other regions of Asia, if you come to Sri Lanka and go to Sigiriya, which is a UNESCO heritage site, if you look at the paintings and the wall frescoes, you'll realize that most of the women are seen and depicted bare-breasted. That was because it was considered normal at the time. It was normal for women to go bare-breasted. We live in a country, whether it be in Sri Lanka, which was formerly called Ceylon, or even if you go to parts of India, even in Kerala to this day, matrilineality, matriclan system, those systems are very common. We had women warriors, we had female sovereigns, we had feudal chiefs who were women, there were ladies who in fact led fiefdoms. There were many significant historic figures who were in fact ladies. And even if you look at their paintings, they are depicted bare-breasted. It was considered normal at the time. It was only after the arrival of the British, starting from the late 18th century, in parts of Asia, whether it be in India or in Ceylon, the British started enforcing Victorian principles on the minds of the Ceylonese as well as the Indians. So prior to the arrival of the British, even during the Portuguese and the Dutch colonial periods, whether it be in India, in Malabar, in Travanco, in various other places, as well as in Sri Lanka, even if you look into the paintings as I mentioned, if you look through even the illustrations that were made during the Portuguese and Dutch colonial periods, look at all the paintings that are held under the aegis of various museums, you'll realize that the queens and daughters of the courtiers and many other dignitaries, they are ladies were in fact bare-breasted. If not, they wore some translucent shawl. This was considered normal at the time. Then during the British colonial period, they started enforcing all these Victorian concepts of morality, instilling these thoughts, and they were trying to colonize not just the lands, but colonize the minds of the people as well. 
So the Maharajas, the princes of different parts of India, the nobles, the squires, they established good ties with the British. So the British sent them abroad, got them educated, they were exposed to the Western culture and all that. And this was when the Maharajas of Travancore as well as other erstwhile kingdoms of India, there were over 565 princely states in India during the British Raj. So they started adopting all these Victorian concepts of morality. So it was during this period that the Maharaja of Travancore in the early 1800s decided that okay fine, the royals and daughters of aristocrats and nobles and those Nambutri Brahmins and the Nair women could either choose to wear a clothing to cover their upper body, if not they can stay without wearing anything. But when it comes to the lower caste women, especially those who belong to the elevator caste, the Nadar, the Tiyas, the Dalits and many other marginalized communities, those women should never wear any form of upper garment. This was a rule that was imposed by the Maharaja of Ravengo. This was a norm not just in India but even in Sri Lanka. Even during the time of the Nayakar kings of Sri Lanka, this was in the 17th 18th centuries, even based on the writings of European scholars, it is clear that even during that period, even in Sri Lanka, in the Kandyan kingdom of Sri Lanka, those who belong to this community called the Rodiyas, they are also untouchables of Sri Lanka. So the Rodi women were prevented from wearing an article of clothing to cover their torso. They were prevented from covering their breasts. And if they did, they were in fact subjected to all sorts of tortures. They were humiliated publicly and they were asked to strip. That was the rule at the time. This was in Sri Lanka. This was during the time of the kings. Likewise, in India and in Travancore, which is a part of South India, which is now part of Kerala, in the state of Travancore, which was one of the princely states, the Maharaja imposed a special rule saying that those who belong to the higher echelons of society, they could choose to wear a piece of clothing, if not they can go bare-breasted or use some sort of shawl to cover their body. The lower caste or the Avarnas, they should never be allowed to cover their body. This was a rule because at the time there was this social stratification based on caste system. There was a pecking order. Casteism was stringently observed not just in India but also in other parts of the world. So in Travancore there was this tax known as a Mulakaram tax. Mulakara basically means breast tax in Malayalam. Likewise the men were expected to pay the Thalakaram which basically means head tax and there were a wide array of taxes imposed on the people of Travancore an erstwhile state of India. So the women who belonged to the lowly caste were not allowed to cover their breasts. And if they covered their breasts, they were expected to pay a special tax. And this tax was called the Mulakaram tax. So the upper class women were allowed to cover or stay bare-breasted. But the lower caste women, under any circumstance, were not allowed to cover their breasts. If they covered their breasts, they were expected to pay a special tax. And this was the rule that was imposed in the early 1800s. And this, many historians believe, was an influence of the British. It's after the British came to India, especially the southern part of India, and that's when they enforced all these Victorian concepts of morality. And that's when the Maharaja decided, okay, fine, let me not allow the lower caste women to cover their breasts, but then the upper caste women can decide to either wear or not wear a blouse. The whole blouse concept also became popular only in the 19th century. So even if you look through paintings, it is quite evident whether they be in parts of Sri Lanka, northern parts of Sri Lanka, the central region of Sri Lanka, in the eastern provinces of Sri Lanka, the women used to wear saris, but they never wore a blouse. The whole blouse concept became immensely popular through Raja Ravi Varma's paintings. Even Raja Ravi Varma has painted a lot of women who are seen bare breasted. Even he has shown some of the royals belonging to southern India, and they are seen wearing some sort of a transparent shawl to cover their breasts. So this was not considered as an obscene, vulgar, promiscuous way of behavior. It was considered normal at the time. So there is a story that I came across of a lady called Nangili. So Nangili was this woman who belonged to the Elava caste. So this Elava caste woman is said to have sacrificed her life for the king, that is for Maharaja of Travancore, to abolish the breast tax system. Now this story became viral after the publication of this 2016, there was an article published in British BBC Asia and when this article was published, it became immensely popular. There was a brouhaha that was created, lots of controversies were stirred and in fact many were interested in knowing about the history of breast tax. 
So it is said that the Maharaja at the time, in the early 1800s, is said to have appointed numerous officials, those belonging to the Nambudri Brahmin caste and the Nayars and many others, were appointed as tax collectors and there were special officers appointed to collect breast tax. So these breast tax collectors used to go to the villages that were occupied by all these lowly castes and they used to inspect the breasts of all these women. So the women were expected to subject themselves to be examined by these tax collectors. So the tax collectors used to examine the breast and depending on the size of the breast, that's how the tax was imposed. The tax was levied, the amount that had to be paid at tax depended on the size of the breast. I know it sounds odious, heinous and very disgusting. But at the time, the tax collectors were said to have gone to all these villages, inspected the breasts of the women, and depending on the size of the breast, that's how they used to impose that this is the amount that you ought to pay. The smaller the breast, the smaller the amount, the larger the breast, you ought to pay exorbitant sums. So this was an odious rule that was imposed at the time by the Maharaja of Travanko. And this lady called Nangili is said to have been approached by one of these tax collectors and she did not want to get rid of the article of clothing that she was wearing to cover her bosom. Instead, she took this knife and cleaved her breast and she is said to have mutilated herself, carried out the self-amputation, placed her breasts on the banana leaf and presented them to this tax collector who came to her house. This is the story. And then because of the hemorrhage, because of this amputation that she carried out, she died. She wanted this story to be reported to the king. She wanted her grievances to be heard. She wanted this breast tax mulakaram system to be abolished. And this is one of the reasons why she in fact sacrificed her life. So she was revered as a martyr in this particular village where she is said to have sacrificed her life for the betterment of the Elaba community, a marginalized community to which she belonged to. Now this story is not considered as historically accurate by most of the historians. Some believe that this act in fact happened. There was a lady called Langili. She did chop off her breast, but this was done so that not just the breast tax would be removed, but all the taxes that were imposed on the people of Elever community, on all these marginalized communities, they wanted all these taxes to be removed. And that is the reason why this lady called Nangili committed this kind of an act by chopping off her breasts. And this was not because of the fact that she wanted to protect herself or it was because of the virtue or the chastity and modesty and she would did not want a person to inspect her breast, nothing of that sort. She did that because she did not want people of her community as well as others who were considered as untouchables to be paying large sums of money as tax on numerous taxes were imposed. If you read the book, A Native of Trevanko, a book that was written by an Englishman, a British missionary who came to India at the time, called Samuel Mater. If you read his book, you'll come across blood curdling stories, numerous taxes that were imposed, moustache tax, head tax, mulakaram, talakaram, and many other taxes were imposed at the time. One of the taxes being the breast tax. There are also numerous stories on how other elder women were stripped. They were not allowed to wear any form of upper garment. If they were seen wearing an upper garment, they were stripped. They were publicly humiliated. There were many revolts that were staged against the Maharaja of Trebango and this was during the British colonial period in the 1830s, 40s, 50s. There were channel revolutions across Trebango. So there were many revolutions, uprisings against the Maharaja to get rid of the whole tax system. So Nangiri is said to have been the lady who sacrificed her life for these taxes to be removed. But then this story has been interpreted, mostly recently, as a story to prove that this lady did not want herself to be examined, this lady did not want her breast to be seen and that was one of the reasons why she sacrificed her life and chopped off her breast and presented them to the inspector who came to the house. And there is also another legend associated with this story and that is her husband, Nangiri's husband, is said to have jumped into the funeral pyre Right back then, there was a system called Sati that was performed in India. When the Maharaja has passed away, the Maharanis used to jump into the funeral pyre and commit suicide. Likewise, in India, this was during 19th century, when Nangili passed away, her husband is said to have jumped into the funeral pyre and sacrificed his life. This is possibly the only incident of a man who had in fact sacrificed his life by jumping into the funeral pyre after the death of his wife. 
Anyways, most of the historians surmise with tolerable authority that this could be a fabricated account, a story that was sensationalized over the course of time, an urban legend, a myth that became popular, especially after the publication of this article in 2016. But there are also historians that say that yes, there was a lady called Langili and she sacrificed her life not because of just one particular breast tax, but because she wanted all sorts of taxes to be removed. I came across several stories on how statues were hidden in museums. They did not want to reveal the statues because they were considered vulgar and obscene. The best example being the statue of Tara that was taken from Sri Lanka when Sri Lankan Kingdom of Kandy was conquered by the British forces and this was in 1815 after the British Sage of Kandy, after, after the conquest they seized the statue of Tara and this statue was taken to Britain and this statue was later presented by Sir Robert Brownrigg to the British Museum in the year 1830 but the British Museum officials did not want to display they did not want to showcase the object and they placed it in the secret in the secret part of the British Museum the reason for it being that it was considered too obscene, it might arouse those who come to the museum and because Tara who was revered in Sri Lanka, who was worshipped by the people of the country, because she is depicted bare-breasted and because she's got a slim waist and her breasts are revealing, because of this reason they kept it hidden in the secretum for decades. They did not want to show their statue to the British public because they considered it to be obscene. So anyways, if you're interested in such stories, if you want to know more on some intriguing stories surrounding the history of the Indian subcontinent, please make sure that you subscribe to this channel, TMZ The Historian. If you got queries, please send them to tuankarim at gmail.com. Do not forget to hit the bell icon for updates. And also, you can follow me on Facebook and on Instagram. And if you're interested in the history of minority groups of Sri Lanka, as well as the historic landmarks in the country, please watch the television series Lost and Forgotten, which airs every Friday at 9.30pm on TV1 News First. So until I catch you guys with another interesting episode, it is me, Zamir Karim, signing off. Take care, God bless you all and stay safe.